really quick and then we will go to the exercise. So there's four stages in uh, the Taiwan process, and uh, the parts that at least for me have been sort of like sit, uh, that have been salient, like in learning about this, have been the POLIS tool uh, that is able to specifically like disaggregate opinion, show where the points of consensus are, and just generally like generate that deliberation in a way that humans actually can't do, even if like what makes it work is ultimately like, human centered facilitation. So uh, like our is going to be awesome and. Uh, basically give us like a bit of an overview on like that opinion stage especially as well as the succeeding stages of like reflection where the deliberation happens. Um, I think it partly came out in the presentation but something also that uh, I think she'll be expanding on like in a little bit is uh, while the in-person consultation is happening there is a lot of facilitation going on between the digital environment where people are participating and like it's moderators that are converting that right like onto like, so they're live facilitating like, all the questions that come in, they're shepherding those into the room, making sure that that online interaction is being uh, brought into the physical space. Um, and obviously, like, you know, like, there's like, that interchange of like, what's happening here is also being live streamed up. So that online offline interaction with the reflection stage is also be, like, really interesting. Um, so we skip the proposal stage just for now, just because I think so much of this is like, fairly context specific, like the way that Toronto issues get picked up and probably very different from the way that issues get picked up time and time. Um, so going right into the opinion stage, uh, can you give us an overview and like a bit of like a trial on this? I'll still go, I will still talk about it for a little bit of stage. Yeah, So and here is a, a review of the process. So, so there are the four stages, um, and these are the tools that we use to enhance participation. So as I said, um, there are hundreds of ways to look at the process of in Taiwan. So here's uh, the, the picture. Um, no, I mean the drawing. Uh, and we can this um, the. Su Yang, uh, this is another colleague of uh, MPDs. She uh, breaks these four stages into uh, smaller steps. So this is just another way to describe the process of Taiwan. But you know, here's to, uh, to show how we use these tools uh, throughout these smaller steps. And um, the, point, the, the point is that these tools are mostly uh, open source. And here are four, uh, three concepts behind these tools. So here are uh, interpretation, facilitation, and documentation. So uh, these are the three concepts that uh, um, we apply to use these tools. And interpretation is to bridge the communication gaps among people, because people are from all walks of life. So they have their own domain specific language so we have to use uh, the idea of interpretation to help get the idea across to the layman. And the facilitation is the art of collecting opinions from the public. And documentation uh, is really important because uh, uh, it highlights the importance of transparency and accountability. So at each mini hackathon, we will definitely have open a page, a new page of um, Hackpad and everything was uh, will be written, will be recorded as like the minute, meeting minutes of um, of hackathon on uh, of Vita one on hackpad, and also the uh, in facilitation meeting will also have a stenographer to help us record and to put it into transcripts, and of course we'll put it online. So documentation highlights the transparency that. Is uh, and transparency is another core value that we um, that we uh, emphasize. Uh, and so, okay, stage one proposal. 
Um, so at the hackathon, contributor will, uh, if they have something to, or they want to um, like pitch, so they will develop a proposal. So, and I said like, Uber X could be a top-down proposal, and then CI is a bottom-up proposal. And so firstly, uh, the contributor has to develop a, a, like a paper or a draft to convince the other contributors that this specific issue is really important. So it has to make a, uh, to make a statement. And the second, uh, secondly, it, um, the, once the topic is set, then all the, all of the contributors have to come up with a good name or a good title because this is like the attention grabber on the internet if you want to hold, uh, host a survey online. So the topic, like uh, for example, if it's Uber, and we sh maybe you can set the title as uh, should Uber, Uber be legal, for example, is quite a simple one. And as for the NCI case, cause, because the originally um, the most well wide known, um, widely known title of this uh, issue is non-consensual pornography. But it's actually quite hard to translate pornography into Chinese. Because uh, what basically means porn. But what we want to discuss isn't about porn. So uh, it's really hard. So we have spent so many times figuring out how to translate uh, pornography. But, and then we, uh, we decide to use intimate images instead of pornography. So, uh, I mean, the term and the title or the name of that topic is quite important. And uh, if, if it were said it right, and then people would be misled. So, uh, a good name and a good title and a right term is really important. And the third, uh, and there are the other steps of, uh, for the safe one. We have to narrow down the scope of the top topic. It, but it depends and it varies case by case. Because uh, sometimes uh, a specific topic is um, should be narrower, but uh, sometimes we need a broad, uh, if you want to collect general uh, opinions or you want know, to know the sense, general sense of the general public about specific issue, then it shouldn't be too narrow. So it depends. And it have, we have to ensure the scope is fit for the purpose. And we have to map out the strategy, for example, how we, um, how we uh, spread this uh, survey and how we spread the events that we're going to, to do uh, and find out a competent authority. And all of these steps should be, uh, should be determined and should be thoroughly discussed at the hackathon. And find out the competent authority is when we uh, reach out to the public sector. And um, uh, for Vita one, once uh, we need to find an authority, and the authority has to be willing to take on and to be responsible for that issue. If there is no competent authority willing to do that, then we cannot go on. Because uh, this um, Vita one, um, it, it's not, it's just not a facilitation or discussion um, among community or among um, public uh, private sectors or community. We we have to have public sector engaged uh, in the process. So we need to find out the competent authority, and this is where we really need Audrey as a digital minister to sometimes like put a little bit pressure. Um, the ministry and uh, gently force them into <laughs> <laughs> join us. Yeah. Um, and this is the screenshot of Hackpad. Uh, we use this one quite frequently to have our meeting minutes posted online. And uh, lastly, we should choose the right tool for opinion collection. And this one is uh, will be set uh, will be discussed at the proposal stage. And once it's set, then we can go on to the stage two. So, uh, and uh, as the tools, and I'll just I'll briefly just, uh, introduce these tools later. But if the air is not clear, and by the air I mean 
the consent, uh, the consensus, or or the general sense of, from the general public about specific issue, and if it's not clear and it's still vague, so we use police, and police is really a, a good tool to describe an, I mean, uh, to, to discuss about a topic that is still not organized, or we we don't uh, we have no clue at all uh, of what the general public will react to the specific issue and then we should use police and let them decide what should be posted and they can uh, discuss because uh, original uh, traditional question on my questionnaire the all the questions and top uh, and options are all set by the editors but police uh, the contributors can decide what to discuss about and what to vote on by themselves. So these are also one of the, um, the key feature of police. So if the air, the consensus is clear enough, then we can use discourse and organize uh, online forum. And it's both um, mainly like a traditional online questionnaire. And if you're not sure, you can just go traditional, like use Slido or Typeform, that kind of, or like Google Form to to uh, run the survey. Okay. Um, oh, there's another set. Because uh, at the proposal stage, the contributor or the proposer or the, maybe the competent authority goes to the mini hackathon to propose, then some of them may have already had done some research, so they should publish their presentation documents or research paper uh, online on the tower platform so that any online users can have a look on what has been discussed about and what, what kind of research is done, and then uh, they can use it as a reference. So Taiwan has also lots of links to um, Lots of research or paper or presentations. Yeah, and okay, the tools um, we have. We'll just um, we will briefly describe, uh, introduce Polis, Discord, Slido. Slido is I believe you guys are all familiar with, and Time Army is just uh, another uh, on traditional online questionnaire. But it's just like a traditional one, but it just looks. I mean, it has a fancy layout, but it's most quite similar um, with uh, Google Form. And this course, um, and pull this out, I'll leave that to Chopin later, and I'll skip that one. And this course, um, it's like an online forum, so uh, you, can, you can have a brief explanation on the topic on the, on the page, upper side, and then you can have a, like an online and toss a top main topic and sub topics. So once you click on the main topic, then it will have the sub topics. And in here, it looks like a, like a Facebook post. So people can reply and like that specific posts. And you can, we can also tag the ministry because each ministry has its account on this course. And uh, this is a rule. Um, set by then minister with our portfolio, Jacqueline. Uh, she requires all the ministry to have an online account on this course. So if the ministry was tagged by the editor, then they should, they are obliged to reply within seven days if uh, a specific, if online users have some questions about a specific topic. Yeah. And the slide up. Uh, is you're all, all familiar with it. And type one is just like, uh, it's a more fancy, fancier uh, online questionnaire of Google form. Okay, so, no, no there's no exercise. And stage two, <laughs> then we go to uh, opinion stage. So based on the consensus that we reach on a stage one, that we have the topic, and we have the name and title, and we narrow down the scope, and we find the common authority, and we choose the tools, and we have published our our um, research paper or other presentations, and we move on to stage two, which is the online opinion collection. And um, here, uh, 
Tech Police, for example, Tech Police as an example, we set up a good guidance as a, like a user manual on the welcome page of Police. So we have to set some rules so that the online users can easily understand how to use these tools. A uh, tool. So for so if it's Uber, then you can tell the online users that um, to post comments always start with like I think, I feel and one single idea or one single post or one single comment. And uh, every comment is independent, so there's no need to reply all those comments because there's no reply like a button. You can only agree, disagree, or has and post opinions separately. As I said, uh, every single comment contains only one single idea. I do not use question marks, so it should be a positive statement, so it makes it easier and mm, not misleading. And write a brief introduction on welcome page. So, um, uh, yes, those DRs these are just some reminders that you have to um, uh, briefly describe the issues that we're going to talk about um, with these tools. So if it's Uber, then you can briefly uh, like have a short introduction of uh, why we want to talk about this. And uh, like, for example, the fourth one described was the next process. If, uh, if you want to let the online users feel that they are respected, then we need to let them know um, what um, their their opinions hold a, a, a certain level of value. So you have to let them know what we're going uh, what we're going to do after this survey. So let them feel that okay, this is not just something that will end here, and it has an ongoing process and explain the purpose and the use of the result and friendly for all, of course. So, like, um, like for example, if it's Uber, then you can have, if there's some, uh, like, news, then you can start with the news link and tell people that it's quite controversial, so it makes the content more friendly for all, all of the uh, contributors. And, uh, city comments are also quite important on Polis because it's a, um, a tool that encourages autonomy. So if there aren't any city comments, then there will be no comments at all. And I will later show you uh, why. And so um, for Polis, uh, the editors or the contributors can uh, post on city comments so to and here you can um, attract them and show them as an example of how we can do this. Like for example, in the SEI case, uh, the first statement can be, I feel that the non-consensual distribution of bodily intimate images is a crime. So it's a simple idea and positive statement and contains one simple idea. So here can show uh, the online online user how to post comments. So um, yeah, yeah the same comments are quite important for all these tools. And but for this course, as I said, you can tag the authority. But this is the if if the tools that you use um, has the function of tagging, then you can use this kind of um, yeah, but good because in here and this course, uh, because uh, Jacqueline Tsai has requested all the ministries to have an account, so that's quite unusual, uh, but it works. Um, but yeah, this is just the feature of the course, of this course. Yes, and, um, and of course, uh, because of the privacy issue and data protection, so we have to ask to, for, for contribution in the survey. So we have to ask if the participant is willing to publish their opinions or if they want to stay anonymous. Uh, so like, for example, every online questionnaire should have questions regarding um, their willingness of anonymity 
or uh, whether they would like to subscribe to the Taiwan um, letter. Uh, so um, this is for um, all the contribution for the future contributions, and it's just a reminder that uh, it has to have this kind of questions to to that. The process, like for example, like for me to want to keep going, and each online opinion survey should last for at least a month. So, um, and if one month is enough, uh, you can extend it. But it also has to be decided by all of the contributors. So you have the duration of the survey has to be. Uh, already discussed at the hackathon too. Um, and here are just some um, reminders that because um, we need to promote and to spread the news or spread the links of the survey. So uh, as I said at the proposal stage we need to map out the strategy and to try to draw more attention and for police um, the editor or the facilitator should keep records by using screenshot of for polis because um, the online users can take a, uh, will have the police of probably survey will show the visualization of the cost clustering. So I mean and every minute it kind of like changes all the time. So the editor or the facilitator can use screenshots to record um, the police uh, visualization set us step. And at the end, uh, we should publish the report. We should because there are raw reports and secondhand reports uh, based on this survey. So uh, if the facilitator uh, join the process really early, so the facilitator can interpret these reports and generate a secondhand report and it will be like a presentation or like a research uh, report. And so these reports should be all uploaded on the Taiwan platform so that um, the internet users can get the results, uh, the raw results and the secondhand results of this, uh, of this report generated by these tools. And of course, because there is a competent authority, so we have to uh, remember that submitting these reports to the competent authority for them as a reference so that they can move on to the next stage. Okay, so uh, any questions or, yeah, I, I believe there are many questions, but, or we want to let uh, Xiaoban show, I think, get a trial. Or maybe we just take one question. Take one question, okay. Yeah, yes. <laughs> Okay, I, I just was curious, the exercise we did yesterday, mm -hmm. does this fit into this process at any point? Uh, for now, it's separate, because okay. that's for PO Network and for the facilitation workshop, and here is for VTAL. Okay. For now, we, because there are some voices supporting that we should combine these two process and like do an experiment, but we haven't done that yet. But maybe we should do that in the future. Yeah. Okay, so uh, Ring Chen will help us do the trial on Polis, and maybe after the, the trial, we can get more. It, has anyone here heard about Polis before? Before today? Oh, okay, cool. Cool, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> can you say that? Sorry, what is the relationship between the PR network? Digital minister Vitaan has already existed. Uh, so, like I said, after some problems in in the end of 2014, because of Jacqueline Tsai, the then minister of Vita portfolio, Vitaan was born, and it has been uh, run by community and with the help of National Development Council. 
So now it's a co-creation and partnership between community and national development concept. But uh, the pity is we uh, sort of like play the role of as a facilitator and try to communicate and help to communicate with public sectors and private sectors and uh, community. So we are like a helper uh, for uh, running detail on. But PO Network, um, it's, it's something after Audrey was appointed as digital minister. And it's a uh, PO Network exists inside the government, inside the central government. Am I right? Yeah, so. If I can add it, then please like, correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, my understanding, just based like, it's on like, Eric's perspective, who's like, the brilliant of like, research on this, um, was uh, PO Network is like, goes like, more specifically within the like, cross ministries, like within government, and also if there are specific community stakeholders that the government is doing outreach for them and it's the facilities that promise social service more from government outreach outwards and within the process that way. Cool. And then like Taiwan itself is entirely citizen led, so I think ultimately it's like it collaboration with the National Development Council is that right? So there's like that locus. And just a little bit of context for people that came in today. Um, Mr. Audrey Tang sits as the digital minister without portfolio, meaning that she is above the other ministries at the theme position, even though because she is without portfolio, she has no technical budget and she has no like, ministry obligations, uh, which gives her the unique position of in her case, she also talked a little bit yesterday about how she crowdsourced her literal like, job description pretty much um, from the communities that she was involved in. And that basically then, her relationship to the government gives her sort of, I guess, like speaking power as sort of like more of a public representation of like what digital government should be like. And so uh, there's that sort of, I guess, like soft uh, power in the kind of getting more ministries to collaborate with processes like Be Taiwan. Um, was basically my understanding. So like Be Taiwan itself like exists outside of government, but then it's able to bring in ministries with accountability. Uh, Audrey played a quite important role here, just uh, for Be Taiwan. She was a volunteer and main contributor for Be Taiwan, but she was still a contributor of Gobzilla community. But once she was appointed as digital minister, she sort of like introduced Be Taiwan into the government, central government, and well recognized by these ministries below her. Yeah, but she's an, 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 an anarchist, so she doesn't like this kind of saying, and she's not here anyway. Uh, so, and with the help of digital minister, so if we, like I said, we need to reach to competent authority to take on one specific issue and Audrey will be like a really good channel to pick up between community and these ministries. Yeah, so she plays a quite important role here between all of these different platforms uh, and networks. I just want to add something. So uh, so I'm from a community, I'm not a public servant, so from a community or a sense of point of view, B Taiwan is a co-creation process with the community, which means you can go just walk in a mini hackathon on Wednesday and eat pizza together and set the agenda and help typing and you can suggest anything and you can be the next facilitator for the next meeting. Uh, that's very different from PO. PO you have to have 5,000 petition or it, it, no, it doesn't have to, but you have to go into a government formal process and it's, it, it's already institutionalized inside the government, but Fita Taiwan does not. So any conclusion or discussion on Fita Taiwan, the government is not obligated to have to do those things that way, but it's an open consultation process. So, and the connection is that Pete is, uh, Audrey's office, is helping these two projects uh, at the same time. And uh, so I want to invite you to use Polis. Uh, how many of you can scan the QR code right here? So for Apple phone, you just need your camera to open your camera and scan the QR code. Do you need Wi-Fi? Uh, we don't have, 
If you if you are in Slido, I, I already have this is the track of Slido and I, I make it Slido here, here's a here's a link as well. Can everybody connect to this is a QR code for Slido? Everyone's good? Okay. How many person getting to Paulus right now? Good? So, so you can go to Slido. You can either scan the QR code or or do the uh, uh, 1106 Toronto. Okay, so how many are still struggling to get into Poland? Please raise your hand. I mean, struggling. Okay, three. Okay, so um, you can see here. I wrote the, the, this is a description right here, so like what problems Uber is trying to solve, what problems Uber is causing, what policy government can make, something like that, and some instructions that you should post the comments like start with I think, and every comment is independent, so there's no need to reply to others. And please use positive statement, don't use double negative statement, that's very hard for people to recognize, and one statement for one comment. I want to share, like, give you an example. For example, uh, I can start with I think, I think uh, sharing economy is is the train. Uh, so, government should modify regulation. Instead of ending every sharing economy service. So this is my this is my statement. So I can write this statement and I don't even have to log in so that I can write to show you how to okay I think we can go go on this go go for an hour show see how so you can start to write your statement so please someone write a statement I can and I from my personal experience um, do do anyone write a statement you can see me write statement and you can say you agree, disagree, or pass. And you can write your own statements. So I'm looking, oh yeah. So I think Uber should be taxed at the same level as tax company and tax should be enforced. So I agree on this. So can keep going. We have to log in. Oh, so you, you can put the common, the problem statements you have yesterday into this into this practice. So you, if you want, you can go back to see the problem statement or the solution statement you have for the yesterday practice, and we can see how people react on your like, solution. Or okay, so So you can, you can be a statement or you can give a reason why, why you think that 
because I bought I think a lot more because of both. So we can see we start to have some group like two people <laughs> at the age.
does discourse integration work? So if you see a statement and you feel like there are multiple ideas in there or you want to like, suggest like a different way of approaching the ideas, is there a place that I can go to to see that discussion? Uh, uh, could you rephrase your question uh, again? Can I, like for example, if there's a statement and I feel like generally I want to, but then I have, I have something to add to it, then... Then, then the better way is you form a better statement. Um, and then, it. yeah, because in Polis, they don't provide you to directly reply to that, to that comment. You need to phrase a new, new statement. Taxis are echo chambers for farts. <laughs> what? Sorry, I'm trying to be a <laughs> I figured there would be a troll on there. What, what, what does that mean? <laughs> so you can just push past. Wait, so what if it's a post like that? I don't know how you do that. Yeah, I wanted to see what the She's got the engine. That's uh, called this so far. So that, that's 
see, so now we have three groups. So we have around 21 people, people in the room and we are, our opinions divided into three groups. So you can see the, sorry, I don't know why it's in Chinese, but you can see the, uh, this is the, the common one. Uh, the, oh, so 90% of people agree that sharing economy is the trend, so governments should modify regulation instead of banning every sharing economy, economy surface. And then also, uh, it's uh, our common ground, it's not that mistake. I want to know the upfront how much I might be charged in this Uber case. And also, I think there needs to be regulations and mobility to protect the personal safety of vulnerable passengers. 100%. Whoa, we have 100% agree on this. Yeah. And then I think right sourcing should be better integrated into a public transit system. That's very interesting. But I don't think I don't see this in the discussion in Taiwan. And I think Uber drivers should have some safety training standards and also 100%. So we can now see uh, uh, among group A is that I think Uber can reduce the need for car ownership. And the one group B, the common statement is, I think a fee should be added to all Ubers on Lyft rides that goes to or found to go with your city. And you can see a, a, some people in group A disagree with this, this statement that doesn't think that the Uber or Lyft fee, ride fee needs to go back to the infrastructure transit. So uh, this is one way to look at the map. So you, so you can see this map focus on the common opinions of different groups. So we have pick group A. This is twenty. Uh, almost passed. So the keep that version. Oh, that version is here. Uber Uber drivers should be licensed like taxi drivers. So group B people think yes, but the uh, taxi driver needs to needs to be licensed, but a large group of people here in Google don't think so. Yes? I'm sure if you already explained this, I'm just confused. So how are you determining who is in A and who is in B right now in terms of visual? Uh, so it's, it's, it's done by the algorithm. So uh, I'm going to explain the algorithm again because I explained you are using. So each, each statement, each question, you can vote agree, disagree, and pass. So it's encoding in the computer system is one, minus one, and zero. And you take this as the, so if the coordinates, so if, if you have one line here, you have one, zero, and minus one on the line. And if one question is one dimension, now we have around 30 statements, then we have 30 dimensions. And each, you're voting on each statement it's a coordinate of that dimension. So then I will have your personal opinion a coordinate position, coordination position, yeah. And then we can count the distance to to each uh, each person. So the algorithm decides who is close, closer, their position is closer, and they so group them together. So the little faces reflect like proximity to one another's shared opinions on statements so far. Mm -hmm. You mean? Uh, when I look at the screen in front of me and I see that there's more little faces on the B side. That's telling me that these people's, uh, like the, the yeah, same so, so similar statements, and therefore they're physically close to one another in their opinion ultimately. Or uh, so if it's in the B side, they if it's B side, they are closer. But so you can see here they are closer. Uh, but because it's the it's a third for this. Polis is a thirty dimensions. Uh, it's a thirty dimensions projection on a two dimensions uh, plane. So here, closing doesn't necessarily make that their opinion are closer, but the group. So only a group. So you can see this. Another way to see that is Polis. They have a back backstage like this. You can go to see a report. Okay. So this is an overview report and everybody can see. Uh, let me pass to the slide.
uh, in Toronto, also the name of the Ministry of Transportation. And, okay, so we have the stakeholders, and now we need to, you know, provide a really good name. How would you name that? <laughs> yeah? How should we regulate how should we regulate right sourcing? How should we regulate right sourcing? Right sourcing? Right sharing. 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 Right can we change regulate to operate? Operate. Yeah. How should we operate? By sourcing. Yes, you should not take it to the end. It's not that we will be familiar with right sourcing or right sharing. And then we need to know what we're talking about. So, EJ, Uber, and Lyft. Maybe just remove right sourcing instead of Uber. It's very clear. It's clear to copyright. How should how should we operate Uber and Lyft? And taxis. And taxis. How should we or, operate? Or hire. So are we crossing a right sourcing out? Or so we copy yeah. it? Yeah. You can hire We are crossing it out. Yeah. How should we operate Uber, Lyft, and taxis?
Uh, is it okay to change the question halfway through or would you start a new course? If you were to change the question? Yeah. No, it's the same. Like you wouldn't change the topic halfway through? I mean, will it influence the URL? It's not influence the URL, but it's not it's it's not supposed to change the questions halfway through. Okay. But because I I missed the step that we should cross sourcing the the question first, so that we modify this one, yeah, to make it more precise. Yeah, as you can see, here is the backstage of police survey. So at any hackathon, uh, firstly we need to specify or uh, to name the topic and then we go on to the description and we should cross words what we should uh, what we write in this uh, in here and we should uh, have our own rules of this police survey um, and also we can have our own CD comments if we have time then we can uh, try to submit some CD comments as an example for other online users to understand how to offer, uh, how to use this online uh, public survey. Yeah, so this is what the backstage looks like. And uh, you can also monitor. whether they feel this is friendly enough, but they still think it's not that um, easy to use. I mean, like for senior, um, they think it's quite confusing when, if there is no CD comments. So there, um, if there is no CD comments, I mean, in zero statement, then there isn't any, like, agree or disagree button to click. So it's quite confusing. So uh, first, one specific, uh, one statement is good enough to show as example, so that there's a click to uh, the button to click to show them. And but somehow the the mobile the version mobile version might look a bit confusing. I don't know. Yeah. But yeah, we need. Um, we have worked with some of the colleagues. Uh, they are working for police and uh, station in New York City and. Uh, they are still trying to make it better, and or um, in the past the report wasn't like this, but now it's getting better. Yeah, so it's still improving. Uh, and you can also moderate the comments here that you can um, reject. reject. So if you want, if it's like uh, really like an insult or insulting or discrimination, so you can uh, reject that. But we seldom do that. Um, because if, if you do in, you reject something, then it's getting subjective and it will be controlled by some like, editors and facilitators. So, um, but we haven't had that kind of insulting uh, comments yet, yeah, so far. So, but I mean, there is a function to moderate the comments so that it won't get messy. Another question. Like the irony is that municipal licensing standards that the city of Toronto is currently doing with municipal for hire review and public consultations. Um, so like something like this would be like just not not to not uh, to the level that you use it in terms of Taiwan, but like um, just like even a test at a at an in-person event or something. Do you have examples of jurisdictions using bullets in this way? Besides me, Taiwan? Yeah. Jurisdiction. Me? What did you make have example in jurisdiction? Just like, um, basically I'm just wondering if there are case studies you can point to um, to help public servants, for example, in the city of Toronto. And, like, I don't know how realistic that is, it's not probably, but just like examples of people using a tool like this. So it's not only in Freetown 1, uh, there's a internet talk, sh not talk show, kind of internet political talk show 
they use this to collect uh, their audience opinions uh, before they they recording they re recording a show so that they can you know solve an issue and see what they find it and then they can talk about opinions in this and also uh, sometimes we have huge debates so. There was a time that uh, a little girl was just randomly the pig and cut a sword on the street. So uh, they generates a discussion on death penalty. We still have the death penalty in Taiwan. So it's not any government officer or something. Just someone put on the police and ask, what's your opinion on death penalty? As I remember, it's around 2,000 people joined the discussion. Yeah. Uh, Alright, now would you like to share, because uh, we have one specific um, canning for okay. drunk drivers and they use police, uh, the facilitator used police to have a previous research on what's the general sense of the general public on, <coughs> on the canning for drunk drivers. Can we get back to that question later? I have to look at the data again. Okay. <laughs> yeah, so we, uh, the, uh, the joint, the joint platform, uh, we have a case about whether we should have canning for drunk drivers and uh, sexual sexual assault of, of children. Yeah. And uh, the facilitator, um, uh, she, uh, he, but it's not, it's not mandatory. Uh, but because the there were too many signatures on the e-petition website, like want the government to have canning uh, uh, to be uh, in the law. So, okay, sorry. Um, One of the petitions on the e-petition website in Taiwan uh, is there were uh, proposer want and petitioners want the government to have canning. In, in our law to punish those people who, do, who does child abuse and drunk driving. And because there were, I think that's the, we got most signatures for that case uh, in Taiwan. Uh, in the, the highest number. Yeah, it's the highest number one. So we want to know, in, during that time, I don't think we have the comment where you can pull or against the petition. You can just um, sign, give a signature. So we would like to know what people are for, a for or against for, not just, yes, I want to sign a petition. That's why we, we open the, uh, the police to gather deeper insight about why people are signing to that petition. That's the reason why we use that and combining the police with the petition also. Where did that the referendum in Colombia too? In Colombia? Yeah, yeah. So Alec is the launch order here. And drunk driving has been a really controversial issue in Taiwan. Uh -huh. Okay, so lunch time. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So lunch time. Thank you.